Back to Dante Wright. Do you feel like he was the reason that he feared for his life was because of all the prior incidents? Because if you if you're a black male and you're being apprehended by three or four more officers, you, you, you're in your 20s, you've been watching the media, your social media, you see what's going on, and all you see is guns and people talking to you as if you did something wrong. Yeah. And th the thing to me is, where does it come to a place where you rather run for your life and end up being killed than just to go to jail and your mom is able to come get you out the next day? Because I feel like at some point you explain that to a 20 year old. It's not that serious. You're not really in all that trouble. It's a traffic warrant. You can call somebody to come down and get you. We'll sort this out. But when you treat somebody like they're a criminal and they don't have a criminal mentality, then they, they, it's fight or flight. So either- I mean, I think, I think a couple of things were at play with Dante. And I think it's important for us to, one, that's a real man who was a mother's son, right. who was a child's father. And so while I, I have several things that I think I could share I don't want people who are watching to just think we're treating this like a, a case without emotion, but right. you know, I have five kids and my wife and I and black parents all over America have had brutally, painfully difficult conversations with our kids, including my daughters. Like this isn't just, you know, they killed Sandra Bland over a, a, a traffic violation. And so, right. And it's not just one conversation, it's a lot of conversations. But what I've tried to teach my kids, and this is me teaching a kid how to respond. My kid, and I've taught kids this across the country, teaching a child how to respond to a situation under pressure and them actually being in the situation are very different. Right. So I've taught my son, like I've said hard things to my son, like, Son, if you actually do something wrong and you're caught doing something that you know me and your me and your mom would hate, even if you know you did it, don't run, don't fight, and just know I love you. I will I'll come get you. We'll get through it. And so even if you've made a huge mistake, like kids in New York where I live are really independent. So they go in and out of stores. I told my son, I said, son, don't you ever steal a damn thing. Right. But if you steal something and you get caught, let me tell you, here's what you do. Here's what you don't do. And just know, I don't know how your mother's going to feel, but just know I'm going to show up and I'm going to be there for you. Well, me telling my son that, someone telling Dante right that is different than all of a sudden the police are behind you. Right. Now they're at your window and they're telling you, why do you have this air freshener in your window? And then he gets out of the car. And I've read studies about this, Jesus. Black people who don't have warrants, who don't have air freshener hanging from the window, studies have shown that our blood pressure goes up. Right. People, if you don't have any trouble at all, you're not riding dirty, you're, you're clean. But when those police lights are behind you, all of a sudden, everything that helps you think clearly goes away. Oh, I absolutely know. And, first hand. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, and, first hand. And, and so you, the best you can do is try to rehearse in your mind before, before you're in trouble, how you'll behave when you're in trouble. Right. So that when you are in trouble, You've already played the scenarios over in your mind and you can just play that scenario out. But in Minneapolis, it's not just that they killed George Floyd 10 miles away. I could tell you 20 names. Mm. And it's the same in Atlanta. It's the same in Los right. Angeles. It's right. the same in Houston. Every city has a few names that go national, but they have dozens of names that never go national. And I think in that moment, his blood pressure was rising and he panicked. And when they told him that he had warrants, 
in in that moment, I wish and his family wishes that he would have done A, B, or C. But the truth is, we have to investigate, like, why was he actually pulled over? Right. Like, what were these warrants actually right. about? Right. Right. And as much as easy as it is to say, well, damn, had he just taken a deep breath and realized he could get through this. Again, that's what you, that's what you, that's what me and you were saying in the studio. Right. But when people are under pressure like that, and then, and then here's another thing. Studies show that our brains are still developing until our mid twenties. And this is a, this is a 20 year old young man. He looked like he was 15 mm. and your brain is still developing. He's under a lot of pressure and, um, and he was scared. Yeah. And I just posted a video on social media of a white man in Minnesota who police surrounded his car. This was, just this week, surrounded his car and get on the car. He hits a police officer with a hammer in the face. Wow. A police officer is holding onto the car and this man drives off and they don't shoot him. And what I'm saying is Dante Wright, also in Minnesota, was Philando Castile during another traffic stop. Yep. Yep. Black boys and men, black girls and women, don't get the same patience, don't get the same long suffering that white boys, men and women get all over the country. And so um, what I know is the officer who shot and killed Dante Wright, had that been somebody she cared about, she would have known the difference between a taser and a Glock. Absolutely. 